Welcome everyone uh, for this session on monitoring Docker containers and Dockerized applications. I'm Minakshi. Uh, I lead the cloud and network solutions team in Bangalore, India. And with me joining my colleagues Anand, Rahul, and Satya, um, engineers in the cloud and network solutions team. So basically what we want to address today is uh, a short introduction about containers. We have been kind of listening about containers all through the day. So we'll keep it short and mainly, mainly dwell upon um, you know, what are the challenges in monitoring containers, uh, then what is the approach uh, uh, that we have come up with monitoring containers, and a short design um, and a short demo on uh, monitoring containers. As we all know, you know, containers are becoming uh, increasingly popular uh, you know, for uh, you know, be it a development environment or a testing environment or production. Uh, you know, basically containers virtualize the OS just like the way the hypervisors uh, do it, uh, virtualizes the hardware. Containers enable any boiler to be encapsulated as a lightweight, portable, self-contained uh, environment, and uh, that can be manipulated using the standard operations uh, that we are familiar with. It uh, basically wraps up a piece of uh, software in a complete file system, and then, uh, you know, with whatever libraries and kernel, uh, you know, piece of kernel that is required, uh, and runs on top of an operating system. Now, Docker and LXCs are some of the most popular implementations of containers today. And, uh, you know, it can be run on any Linux server uh, as a VM or uh, on a VM or a physical host or directly on your OpenStack. So some of the key aspects to note as we move on is uh, the ability for them to be moved around between missions without any modifications and ability of the containers to work together. Without short introduction on the containers, we'll just uh, start looking at uh, some of the challenges that we face today uh, in monitoring containers. Uh, as these become widely popular, how do you build a scalable, intelligent system uh, for monitoring these containers? That I'll hand it over to Anant to go over the challenges of monitoring these containers. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Okay, so traditionally when we say monitoring, uh, a lot of things comes into mind. Uh, so monitoring application, monitoring your host itself, network monitoring, there's so many uh, points where you can actually monitor. So, and we'll look at some of the challenges that you face when you run applications on containers. What are the different uh, areas where you'll have to specifically concentrate? And uh, so one of them is, uh, you traditionally want to mo monitor network, uh, memory, disk, and CPU utilization. Of course, they will have furthermore uh, subcategories when you drill down, but these are the broad classifications that you would want to monitor. And uh, what you, at, at different levels you'll have to monitor. One is your application itself and on the, contain, or the container in which it's running on and the host on which uh, those containers are running on. So you could also have clusters of uh, uh, applications uh, you want to monitor. So they are at different levels you'll have to monitor. And um, there are a lot of tools that you have open source, proprietary, there are so many available. And they may follow their own notations, their own representation of the statistical data that are collected. So if you are going to stick to a particular tool, then you're confining to the capabilities of that tool. And uh, so, the, so your decision making is going to be dependent on the capability of that particular tool. And uh, other point is the container itself can get overloaded if you keep constantly bombarding with the tool. So your performance may not be accurate. So that is one more challenge. And uh, at the end of all that, you, you collect all, a lot of statistics, raw data from different containers, hosts, and, and uh, network clusters, all that. But what do you do with that data? That, that's what is most important. At the end of the day, you collect all the data and then see what does it mean to the company in terms of cost, or in terms of performance of the application itself, there are so many inferences that you can draw with just the raw data. So a lot of work needs to be actually put in, and that is a, a very hard problem to solve. It's not a single equation which gives you all the results. So that is one of the biggest challenges here. Now, uh, monitoring an application itself that is running in container poses a different set of uh, problem. So container will actually abstract everything. And then you, you have a confined uh, place where you run the application. That means logs related to that particular application is confined to that container. Then you have distributed 
deployment of that application, then how do you identify how the control flew from one container to the other? How did your uh, network trans uh, communication between those containers, are we able to measure that? Is it choked at some point? Or there are multiple containers, probably there's a deadlock situation. One is waiting for the other to release a resource. So these are all different kind of challenges that uh, come up when you run applications only on containers. And another one is when you're talking about user experience. A lot depends on various factors, not just about your system's performance. For example, if, if you want to measure user experience in, ter in terms of response time, uh, a lot depends on your internet connection speed. Uh, it, it's not just about the response time at the server end, right? So th the multiple challenges that are posed because of uh, these varied aspects. So what we are trying to address here is try to solve some of those challenges with the approach that we are suggesting and the design that we are suggesting. Okay, so your apps could be uh, run uh, on, on a container that, that can be self-contained self in a host itself. So, you, so your cluster of applications, they all could be on the same host itself or they could be distributed between different hosts. So uh, how do we go about uh, dealing with those? Let's see. So you need to be able to identify the uh, different levels at which you want to monitor. One is your definitely your application level, and then different con uh, your, your cluster level. Now, what kind of monitoring? We'll get to that in the next slide. And uh, at host level, you, you see some statistics, uh, available resources and stuff. What it means in terms of related containers, that's, that's the key. One container might say, uh, OK, I have one TV available. The other container might also say one TV available. For all you know, that's a shared one TV. So how do we assess those things? That becomes the key. And uh, so, uh, so in order to be able to uh, do a good job of the monitoring, so we'll have to monitor in diff different strategies. One is proactively monitor. The other one is reactively monitor. And uh, then you monitor at, uh, adaptively. We'll get to this. Uh, let me just go over this first. So uh, what, what do we mean by these three terms? Proactively is when you try to monitor and get status and identify what are all the possible failure points. One, one example could be you could run out of disk space. So you monitor your disk utility, or maybe set a threshold when you go about that, raise alerts to prevent disk running out of disk. So that could be a proactive monitoring. The other one is reactive monitoring. Maybe the application itself is throwing some error, but uh, you don't uh, realize that at the top level. So maybe. Uh, you can send alerts back so that you can be aware of which particular node or application is throwing error, and you can stream logs to see which, which is the exact error log, what could have caused the problem. And uh, adaptive monitoring is when you can identify containers or applications that are spun up automatically without having to uh, you know, query individually. You find out this, this is the container that you want to monitor, and also, you can use multiple tools, not just a single monitoring tool. You use a combination of tools, pick the good ones from all the tools, and create a common model out of it. Memory is memory. Whatever is it, mem underscore cache or cache underscore mem, it's still memory. So you uh, abstract it and uh, put it in a model, and that gives more sense. And you can do a lot more things on that data if you can actually get the combined power of all the open source tools that you have. So now let's get, get back to what is it that we want to monitor. So we already talked about the different levels that we want to monitor here. So let's see at each level some of the parameters that you can monitor are what is the total CPU usage and what per CPU core what is the usage and overall system what is it and uh, how much is your host using and how much of it is uh, uh, being consumed by your application or comparatively between containers what does it mean and what is the load average. And again for memory you can see what are the page faults and what, uh, what is the cache memory that is available, what is the kernel memory, what is user memory. Similarly, for disk as well, you can monitor synchronously and asynchronous writes, what are the different um, response times for it, and in terms of uh, what are the faults, if there is any read-write fault, so you could monitor those. And network, again, uh, as we said, network could be monitored outside the host to in inside the host, and again, between containers also, what is the bandwidth between containers? What, are, what kind of traffic goes between containers? You could draw inferences like which nodes uh, of your, let's say, three-tier application is uh, heavily loaded. Probably there's a lot of communication between app and DB and not much between um, web and app. So those kind of inferences that we can draw. 
so like I said, intelligently correlating all these information and making more sense out of it and suggesting business uh, decisions or capacity planning, a lot of that can be achieved by uh, doing this. And uh, let's see. Okay, so uh, we'll actually go over a detailed design. Uh, we'll have Rahul here explain about uh, the design that we are proposing and uh, how each component is able to help us achieve some of the goals that we set and how did we overcome some of uh, those challenges that we talked about. Okay. Yeah, hi. So, um, so basically when we were designing the whole, uh, you know, the solution that we are proposing, so we had certain objectives, we want to share that. So the first and foremost was that we did not want to overload the Docker daemon itself. All the monitoring calls, if you're doing something, uh, getting the info from the Docker daemon, and as you scale, this could be a bottleneck. We all understand that. So uh, different, and then we want to put a different approach at, for monitoring at different levels. Apart from that, uh, the other key thing that we wanted to build was a completely modular model, and uh, which would be a driver-based approach for all possible you know, monitoring components that are there today. And uh, also add on to this would be like you could m run multiple such monitoring agents and gather info. So what a single agent, uh, you know, a single tool could give you would be limited. So if you use more than one tool and uh, which which completes your model, you get all those data and uh, from from that particular host regarding uh, you know the host application as well as the um, the Docker container itself. So um, apart from this, uh, we we all know that uh, to get some. Uh, sense out of the Docker systems, you need to cl uh, cluster them and you need uh, stuff like Kubernetes or Swarm. Uh, you, there could be specific uh, info which you want to take out from them. So uh, this was one of them. So let's deal with, uh, with the high level component design. So uh, if you see, we have uh, the, the, uh, an API which exposes all that we do, um, and uh, that is a REST-based API, so you could use a REST client or a UI or CLI to access it. Um, on, the, on the right side, you see all the hosts. So we have one, one agent running per host, which has all your containers. It gathers information and would uh, put it on the queue in an asynchronous model. And uh, the orange section that you see is a logical grouping of components here, which is uh, which would constitute to your monitoring controller. Um, all the con all the host would put uh, put the information about the application, the containers, um, uh, and the host onto the queue, which come to the engine. The engine does the aggregation, and uh, after it's done the processing on that data, it, it stores that into a database, preferably a columnar database in our case, as we're using. And then comes an IQ, IQ module. So as you all know, you know general uh, logs, if you just store all the logs, they are dead data, right? To make sense, we, we're using this IQ module so that you can actually derive sense uh, out of what, uh, what your log gives you. So you take a sample uh, of the data and uh, stuff like, you know, uh, on what days your network is more choked, on how much uh, memory load, how, how, how is your, um, you know, how is your network behaving when, when the load on your memory goes up or CPU goes up. So you can generate, I mean, a, as many things that you want to. So it's all unstructured data after all. Uh, then we go to the functions. So uh, all the functions that uh, would be done by this would be like it would collect all the uh, data and you know s stats and logs from your app, container, and host, and then the engine would model and process that data, store it somewhere in in a you know a, basically sanitize it and store it at a single place, and then our IQ module can analyze it, and both can send you you know uh, uh, the stored data can give you what are present results. And the, um, the IQ module after analysis can give you predictions as well as suggestions. Going on to the uh, agent, uh, this, uh, the design of the agent itself. So we have, uh, you know, a driver that would monitor the host, a driver that could monitor your apps, and uh, a driver that would get, you know, log and stats from your container itself. 
and there could be multiple drivers which are doing that and uh, you, you know the, the all the agent would do is that uh, it, it would check whether it is getting all the params that are required so basically your sanity of your model inside the engine does not break once it is done that it will dump package all that data and dump it to your queue and uh, the queue would take it to to the engine wherever the engine is residing so about more about the agent it is basically one agent per host and uh, agent monitors the host containers and applications as we just saw um, agent sends and receives to the engine in a, a sync model so basically uh, all of your calls which are happening would not be a blocking call uh, your engine tells that go ahead monitor this particular host it takes its time fetches all the data packages it and in an asynchronous fashion sends it back to the, to your engine uh, then you have a driver based log and stat collection uh, driver based tool uh, you know you can use the tool of your choice so basically the agent is not restricting you that hey use this particular tool only so you know there are so many tools today in the market which you could uh, b using which you could um, you know uh, monitor the docker container or the host or the application so you can choose the application you know the monitoring application of your choice and then uh, this would just plug in into the system so more than one driver can run in parallel and uh, takes care of the sanity of the data to conform to the data model of the engine uh, the monitoring contro controller as we saw over there was uh, a logical grouping of the, the components. The components uh, need not reside on a single host itself or a single container. They could be, all of those components could be individual containers as well. So uh, this is basically a logical grouping and uh, there is a REST based API that connects to CLI, UI and REST client. Uh, driver based storage module that uses any columnar database. So that is again your choice. Um, there is an IQ module that we talk, we'll, we'll, we'll see what more it does in, in the following slide. So uh, apart from that, the engine does aggregation of stats and logs from different Docker host, integration with identity providers like Keystone. So basically, that would provide multi-tenancy uh, for your, for your, you know, and segregation of the logs on basis of that. Uh, communication from the agents via asynchronous queues, grouping and processing of data based upon your use case. The IQ module, uh, basically the IQ module is, uh, as I said, you know, uh, if you just store your logs, they would mean nothing. So, uh, you know, if you, uh, uh, they're all unstructured data and, and I know I can see so many smart minds here and when I speak of unstructured data, it just, you, you understand that it opens a whole new domain, right? We, you can find what, what could relate to what and build, build uh, you know, a lot of meaningful stuff out of it. So that's what m uh, you can derive meaningful, uh, meaningful inferences out of this data and which would actually provide value to the user, right? Uh, then uh, for, for doing this, we would use analytic tools like, you know, there's a library called Pandas. I'm sure you guys know it, uh, SciPy. Uh, we, we, this is under implementation. We haven't actually implemented this and we're looking uh, for different modules which would help us do that. Um, apart from that, this module could help you, you know, the IQ module could help you to uh, detect the error before it actually happens. Uh, it could tell you a usage and load pattern over a long time. Uh, you know, even like, you know, wetness days, your um, data center or, or this particular node gets hit by so much. Uh, it, it basically, it would tell you the history of, of how, how your container has been used uh, by going through all the logs. And uh, th that day you can understand that, you know, I can put a load balance and maybe multiple containers for that. Um, the suggestions, uh, basically, the the uh, the output of this module would be suggestions to the user, right? And maybe you know, if we go a little further, we could develop a lot of automated systems which could take care of that. Now we have the demo. Uh, a short fraction of what we we just saw in the design has been implemented, and uh, Anant will just run through the demo for that. So for uh, just uh, like a POC, we wanted to implement some part of uh, the design that we talked about. Uh, so uh, we uh, ran a uh, Ubuntu VM on a laptop and we installed uh, some of the related packages. A lot of those components that we saw earlier are more in an abstraction of the type of tool it can be. 
So uh, this is not really tied to any particular tool as such. So we've been trying to make it as generic as possible and as pluggable and driver-based at every level possible. One, one is the agent tool itself, which collects statistics, is a driver-based one. And even the database that you plug into is driver-based. So for demo's sake, we've used InfluxDB. And again, uh, you can uh, get graphs out of your time series data that gets stored in a columnar database. So for demo, for, we've used a uh, Grafana as a tool. And uh, driver, uh, we have actually written a wrapper over Docker's own library. That's Docker Pi. It's a Python plugin, Python library available from Docker, which connects to your Docker daemon and gives you some statistics. And uh, we've written a wrapper over it. So uh, basically, the Docker daemon's uh, stat command is uh, a blocking command. It's like your VM uh, stat or top kind of command, which shows you running statistics on screen. So. If you, anybody of you, I'm sure you would have tried, if you write an API for the stat command, it, it gets hung there. So what I've, we found actually in many of the documentation that is not available is there is a next method. And stat.next will actually take you to the next container and it'll keep running. So we found it the hard way, so I'm just sharing so that if you, if you guys don't know, you can pick it up. All right, so before we uh, uh, see, uh, I'll show you some part of the pluggability that I talked about. So this is the agent that we are running on this machine, which is collecting statistics. And uh, this, is, this is a place where you can configure a driver. This is very similar to the NOAA's compute driver kind of architecture. Uh, of course, this means that there is a wrapper available uh, from the agent to handle this particular tool. Uh, if you, for example, there are other tools available. Uh, you could write your own implementation, connect to the C groups uh, instead of connecting to the Docker Pi. Uh, or connecting to the Docker daemon, or you could use some other uh, tools that are available, like C Advisor, or um, uh, there's Ruxit, there's Sysdig. There are so many tools available. So you could write uh, your own uh, plugin. Oh, I'm so sorry. So uh, also for log collection and log streaming, you could write your own uh, plugin, or you could use any of your uh, uh, available tools like uh, LogStreamer, or, and then have a log collector in your server which can collect that and then load it into your database, right? Yeah. So and some of the other configurations that you see here are related to the agent itself. And if you want to monitor just the agent itself, if that is throwing an error, you could you know enable logs and stuff. Okay. So. Let's go. So we were actually running uh, one or two containers already, and the agent is already running in this uh, machine. So we'll see uh, what are the containers that are running and how we are collecting statistics, and what are the kind of statistics that we are collecting. We'll take a look at some of those. So we see that Docker PS is showing already three containers are running. And uh, we've used InfluxDB, as I said. So let's go and log into InfluxDB and uh, see what stats are being collected, how we have logically grouped some of those. So uh, as I said, time series data that is already being logged for uh, as a broad classification disk memory and CPU. Let's go and spin up a new container now and see that automatically that is detected and starts monitoring and stats entry gets uh, pulled into the uh, database. So we've created a new uh, container called test. So we see that appearing here. Okay. So uh, the, the rate at which you want to be able to monitor the stats at which you want to pull, all those can be configured. And the InfluxDB also gives a nice uh, UI representation of the data. So we can go and take a look at it. But it's not really tied to InfluxDB. Uh, any, uh, data, any columnar database would make sense. Since they are all time-based statistics that get updated, uh, a columnar database really helps in that case. So we can see the different time series that are there. So the grouping here can be based on, I mean, there is no uh, limit to their imagination. But I've just grouped it as memory disk and um, CPU. You can group much more, you can even go further down. And depending on your, you can create your own uh, interpretations of the data. 
and uh, even business suggestions could come in from setting filters. Uh, there's so many other things that we can do here. So we'll, we'll look at uh, what are the parameters that each one of these um, time series provides us. So for now, the parameters that you see here are limited to those that are provided by the DockerPy library. Um, but as I said, the interpretation uh, could vary between the tools that you use. So the idea is to model them completely and uh, make it generic so that any tool will give you the similar kind of statistics. Let's move forward. Okay. All right. So we can see some of the memory related uh, statistics here. Or, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what is the uh, cache memory and what is your system memory uh, and uh, what what is the uh, uh, response time when it comes to a network uh, statistic those things are all uh, logged here the the column that you see here is what is returned by the um, rocker pi library but as i said the the model that we are building is going to be more generic and irrespective of whichever tool we classify them that's where the intelligence of the engine comes in and um, I just wanted to show you an example of uh, how you can integrate it here. So let me stop it here and show you actually on the machine that is running. So this is a Grafana tool that was integrated with the InfluxDB instance that was running on this VM. I'll show you where you can go and configure the database. This is uh, uh, the record for memcache. Based on the time series based input, Grafana generates this kind of tools for you. So this shows, uh, the empty spaces show that the VM was actually powered off at that time. And uh, you can infer so many things from this. If you can look at your response time here, then you can make out what, when, when do you see the spikes? On which date? You, you would probably see by month end, everybody would connect to the employee self-service to see salary. So that, that is a point where that server could be choked, right? Uh, or when Monday mornings you come in, there, there would be a lot of emails. So email servers in the target there, right? So, okay, let's look at some of the uh, configurations that we have here. So I've configured my InfluxDB database settings here. So this is my table name, or rather the database name. So there's no concept of table here. It's more of a series. And um, the InfluxDB is also running on the same machine. This is a place you can configure uh, your credentials and stuff. And there are a lot of uh, tools available to design your own dashboard. What are the kind of output that you want to see? What are the kind of graphs that you want to see? There are a lot of builders that are available based on the data that is available. You can go and uh, pick. Uh, and select different types of graphs. You can have different kind of histograms generated for the same kind of data. So let's um, see what else can we configure here. Okay, so here you can uh, edit and you can give a different kind of query. Uh, currently I'm just showing you a cache uh, data from the series called memory. You can drop down and you see all the parameters that we're collecting here and you can look at some of those and you can, you can check max usage or inactive, or you can perform more operations on it. What is the mean response time? What, what is your uh, high response time? What is your max? So there are a lot of functions that you can perform here to draw inferences. And uh, you can have API calls do these and then automate some of the operations that you want to do. For example, based on your load on a particular server, if you want to replicate it and have a load balancer, replicate it on another container, you could automate all that with an API where your engine goes and does that, does this analytics, and uh, so those are some of the business decisions that you can make. And uh, of course, sorry? This one was tried on a single container. This particular demo was run on a single container. Uh, understanding the communications between containers and what it means overall to the application in, in an overall perspective, that is a totally different thing that would, uh, that intelligence would have to come from the engine side. This is only the agent code that I'm showing you. It's only the agent's output that I'm showing you. So as I said, all the raw data that gets collected from individual agents have to be 
put together, correlated, and then you try to make sense. As I said, what it means from one container stats for the other container. So that, that input has to come from the engine side. We don't have the engine's implementation for the demo. That's something we're still working on. But this is only from the agent's perspective. And uh, you can uh, set refresh time here. You can make it auto-refresh, or you can set based on time. Uh, depending on the type of uh, graph, that you can set all this. As I said, again, this is only an example. You could use Grafana, or you could use so many other graphing <laughs> tools that are available, uh, and that gets plugged into your database. The choice is uh, completely uh, based on what, what data that it gives. If, what, in terms of graph, what kind of graph that, can, that we can generate, and how easy it is to use. So uh, that's about it uh, from the demo side. Uh, we can take any questions. Yes. Uh, are you using the internal QT in like, a standalone or production? Uh, for the demo's sake, we did everything in standalone. Uh, in the production, actually, we are not confining to InfluxDB at all. <coughs> We're just suggesting any storage component which uh, can store time series information. Uh, it could be any column in a database. And of course, you can run it in a clustering mode. Even if you run it in a clustering mode, the engine is only going to a particular IP endpoint that it connects to. right? So even if, it, if the data has a replication part, your engine would still connect to only one endpoint to fetch the data. So that's the, the pluggability is one of the main features of the design that we propose, rather than confining to any particular tool. The advantage is even if tomorrow any new, new tool comes, you could still plug it in here and very easy to, you can, uh, you can incorporate that in the design. Well, and one more thing I would like to add here is, uh, this is something that we are proposing. I'm, I'm sure I've addressed some of those people who, have, who are just beginning uh, to understand containers and Docker. I'm sure you had something to learn. And I'm sure there are a lot of experts here from whom I would like to also learn. So I, I would definitely like to probably discuss offline. Uh, if you guys can suggest any improvements to our design to make it even robust, uh, we would be more than happy to you know, learn from you guys and uh, also improve this design. And also, we, we, are, we are also planning to uh, you know, open it up. And if anybody wants to contribute to this, uh, please uh, ping us back. Uh, we'll share the details. Maybe we can yeah, work together. As I said, the engine and the prediction system is a big science in itself. Uh, you could take it to the level of artificial intelligence, or you could just do it very simple as well. So it's a big science, and that involves a lot of great minds. So if you guys can jump in, awesome. Absolutely, yes. Yes. Uh, actually, uh, I'll, answer yeah. Yeah, I'll answer your question. Uh, definitely, we are going to put a blueprint on it. Just uh, let me just repeat his questions for everybody. His question was that: uh, Are we planning to integrate it with OpenStack, uh, or, or how do we do it? Is it already done? So Satya will explain more about. So definitely, uh, we are not confined to any type of uh, uh, driver and also any type of UI. So anyone can use our UI, uh, sorry, our middleware, and uh, he can put his driver and UI and use it. Even it will be great. We'll be putting a blueprint on OpenStack, and if it is accepted, definitely we'll like to share it with OpenStack. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So the tool itself. Uh, you see, uh, does not restrict you to use anywhere. It could be on a standalone Docker setup or in OpenStack as well. So we, we've tried to keep it as modular as possible and pluggable. And even even we've given a northbound API. So if, you know, if if Ciliometer can fetch that data and use it, nothing like it. And I see one of the things is when when you, you more look at it from an application perspective, and if you have a multi-tenant application. Uh, that currently, if you deploy applications on OpenStack, and the applications login and authentication itself may not be currently directly tied to the multi-tenancy of OpenStack itself. It could be different. So what we are also trying to achieve here is have our multi-tenancy plugged into OpenStack itself. And you log into OpenStack and provision a container. So we can show statistics and utilization confined to that tenant only. And what that means to that tenant, and uh, with respect to the quota, are, are, is he going to exceed the quota, or is he going to run issues? Probably the host still has resources, but the tenant doesn't have quota. A lot of things can be integrated, and a lot of scope for uh, uh, pluggability there. Uh, 
add on to this, uh, there, uh, there currently there is, uh, there is a plan to add a keystone piece of it where you can use multi-tenancy on the monitoring tool and also in the Docker so that uh, you'll have a complete solution ready with uh, multi-tenancy and multi-user setup. Uh, you, you would like to contribute? Sure, sure. We'd share uh, details. Uh, currently, it is in a, a private repository. We could uh, give access to it, and we would love to have more discussions, and so we could work together. <coughs> Thank you for that. So those are our Twitter handles. Maybe we can just yes. get touch, uh, in touch just after the yeah. conversation. Sure. We could discuss offline more on this and what plans we have. Thank you for showing interest. No, no. Oh, yeah, one more question. Yeah. Um, I've not actually worked with Monasca, so if anyone of you had. Uh, yeah, definitely. Monasca is somewhat similar here, but uh, Monasca is like, uh, it is a pa addition to this. Currently, we, con uh, only uh, we have done for single Docker containers, but Monasca is like uh, more towards OpenStack side of it, and we have not done, uh, done it yet. Definitely, we'll uh, write a blueprint on Monasca only. And we'll contribute to that. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, please ping us back at our uh, Twitter handles in case of any further questions or discussions. Thank you so much for the interest. Or even now. Yeah, we could still discuss now. In anyone, anyone has any more questions?